All right, guys, how's it going? Uh, wanted to do a live reaction for Ashes of Creation's uh, July dev update. So that's what we're going to be here uh, taking a look at and watching and uh, getting a live reaction to it. Hello and welcome. Salutations, everyone. Welcome to our Ashes of Creation July development update. We hope everyone has been well and safe over the month. As always, <clears throat> it's exciting months for us. <laughs> Time has been flying for you guys. Very exciting. It's been very, hot actually very quick. in San Diego this July. Yeah, my plants. Uh, oh no! Having the yes, end. very exciting stuff. And but I almost, I almost wish I could see what the chat was saying on the day of the stream, but by the way, they don't include it. So. We, uh, in the past, we've we've seen as the community responded positively to any technical discussions, and you guys have asked for us to kind of do a little more of that in the future. And so today's that day. We're going to have a very technical discussion. <laughs> and if you have questions and stuff, pop them in chat. Uh, I know we'll try to answer what we can. Um, I usually super technical as well on the desert pertinent to what we're discussing. Um, but yeah, it's going to be exciting. And yeah. then, of course, we have a character art update, which includes a race that you haven't really seen much of. So it's, I'm sure you guys will Ooh, try that. That'll be cool. And it's one that people excited to see that lately. Um, really? Zach and I were <clears throat> chatting about that. So I think it will be exciting for you guys to see where we're headed in the, for that. And then, of course, we have our studio update, which will be pretty quick, and then we'll do our Q and A. Studio we'll update. As many as we can from spoiler. The they're still hiring. New questions, but as always, everyone's you hiring nowadays answered, because no one's fully staffed. Is amazing and goes through and answers all of them for you, <clears> so, or it gives you the direction of where you can find the answer as well. So, yeah, very cool. So, to I do think it's really cool that they have uh, dedicated people like Becknar. Uh, going through the forums um, and even like the questions on the videos and stuff and answering them every month if they haven't been answered. That's really cool of them to do that. And um, that's a lot of combing through, you know, forums and comment pages and uh, all kinds off, of we have our reminders. Uh, different places where people are talking about the game have our spotlight question from youtube and we do this every stream so all you have to do is subscribe to us over on youtube and leave a comment on the video that is our development update and you could do that for this one as too uh, uh, as well whenever we upload it but today's without further ado uh we are ready to one day into our tech art tool discussion do you want to preface this first video yeah. tech or, art uh, I would love tech to. art so tool discussion. What we're going to see <clears> first <throat> here is a very brief preview. I intended there for Alpha Peak. I didn't mean to do that. The <laughs> desert zones in Alpha 2. And, um, you know, there, we don't want to obviously give away all the secrets and show, you know, everything that's, that is intended there for Alpha 2. Uh, but you will likely see some interesting, um, uh, buildings that might be indicative of some points of interest of some <clears throat> dungeons you might see a little glimpse at a raid boss that lives in the desert um it's really kind of uh you know tristan snodgrass our lead environment artist did an, a, an <clears throat> outstanding job uh putting together this this little um uh video showing you guys what the environment team and the tech art teams have been have been working on and, and building as part of the alpha 2 world um so big big hearts in chat for tristan he spent a lot of time on this he was up late last night getting the final touches uh put on it and everybody who participated in it um but i think thanks tristan enjoy it uh it's going to be a brief uh showcase and then after that we will show a technical discussion uh, about one of our internally created tools from some of our very talented uh, senior technical artists and how we are developing these internal tools to really help build a giant MMO world like Ashes of Creation and um, you know, create better efficiency in our workflow processes, right? In the, in the pipeline- That's really good. To making that's super smart environments and, and these beautiful places in the world. Um, so, you know, incredibly impressed always with, with the talent that our team has um, and is constantly showing. And I think you guys are going to be impressed as well. 
What's in the background on Steven's desk? They look like game boxes or something. Like retail box even though there's not gonna be there's not gonna be any retail cost or box price of the game. It just looks cool. Looks like I'm looking at like a collector's edition or something. They're amazing. I, I mean, we all talk about it every day, but uh, even in the office when you're like eating lunch with someone, it's just great to work with people who are super passionate because, you know, every time you talk to somebody or ask them for something, it's not, you know, like a chore. It's like everyone's excited to do it, oh, which I yeah. think is, you know, great. Absolutely. No, and, and it's always so fun to to really just see, you know, these, these dreams that we've talked about um, you know, for years now, starting to come to a, a, a quality level that's indicative of what players. Yeah, I want to play, Steven. Yes, I know. I'm so, <laughs> what do you want me to do? You need to see me every. I'll do. So, come on, I don't need to get it from you, Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm just saying, from like, just so the players realize, like, we also want this just as badly as you guys. Yes. We want to create the yes. game that we all want to play. So just. Just we're bearing with you all as well. Um, but with that, I'm going to play a cinematic video and then we'll Ooh. turn and we'll chat a little bit and we'll head into the tool discussion. Keep an eye out for some interesting things you might discover in this video. What are these structures? <laughs> all right, we'll see you in a moment. Here we go. <laughs> I'm going to I'm not going to pause. I'm not going to pause. I'll talk, but I'm not going to pause. I need to stop yawning. <laughs> Got a rhino. I like the music. It's the snores. Oh, that's cool. Kitty. The sound that it, <laughs> the ASMR squelching. I don't know how loud this is. <laughs> Very cool. This looks like a fun area to run through. A broken down little building. I love seeing. I love seeing those like wide rolling shots because it really lets you know, like, look at how big this like biome is or this area. I ended up pausing, but. Sculching ASMR. Okay, we're foreshadowing with the uh, little scorpions. Cursed piranha plants. This area looks so nice. This looks beautiful. Dungeon? The statue. Really cool video that Narc put out talking about how this is probably uh, one of the uh, goddesses or uh, one of the big uh, entities in the game. It's pretty pretty neat with how the symbol correlates to uh, some other stuff we've we've seen. They're so tiny. They look like little companions from like WoW or something. More squelching. Lots of ooey gooeys. Very cool. That was super exciting to see. People liked it. Also, they love this the, oh the whispering gosh. whelk. The... Yes. 
It is. <laughs> the snores, as the community has called it. Oh my gosh, the sounds are so good. I yes. love it so much. Cat did a great job. Any snack? They, everybody did a great job, kind of in this in this sneak peek. I I can see the the absolute excitement from the community just dying to get into this zone. Um, but you know, just to give you guys context, next video we're going to show is about 20 minutes long. And it's going to talk about some of the tech that's been internally developed uh, to work in concert with Unreal Engine and helps remove some of the workflow barriers that typically exist as part of the process of making these virtual worlds. Um, and our tech art team has done a phenomenal job um, in, in, in helping create um, tools that our artists can use um, to to essentially keep that creative process within the engine as much as possible. Um, so you're going to hear a lot of uh, technical jargon and, and and that's super smart. And I'm happy to hear them talking about that because you know through their dev updates, it seems like that's something that they're um, they've they've talked about doing this multiple times on other things too. Um, working within Unreal Engine 5. And so the fact that they're creating tools to help them uh, be more efficient and also like create original stuff um, with like textures and, and how they design uh, their in-game assets, that's really important and goes a long way. Like not only is that going to speed up development, but um, like they're going to be able to make content quick and it's going to be, it's not going to just be the same asset copy pasted like 300 times all over the place. So that's really good to hear. Um, pause. Getting, I'm making a sandwich. And okay. Words perhaps that, that might be a little foreign. We'll do our best to, to try to clear some of that stuff up after the video. Uh, but I think you guys are going to enjoy watching, you know, what goes into making such environments like this. You know, what, go, what goes into making the world of Vera? Right. We'll see you on the flip side. I think that's really cool um, that they're they continue to show things like this on the back end and um, really see like how they're making stuff. Especially Hello, with one and welcome to another, especially with how um, like long development's gone on, like how long we've been able to follow this uh, from the development process. It's really cool to see like it's really cool to see the, the curtains kind of. Uh, open up and see what they're really working on and you really get to see like that compare and contrast from like five years ago to now um and it also gives you a direction of like where they're headed what their quality standards are things like that i think it's really important and it's very cool that they're doing this live stream day very excited to be with you we have a little bit of a different demonstration to show you all today we you know we've in the past we've shown kind of um tech that we're using to help build the world of vera and today I am joined by three of our extremely talented senior technical artists on the team. I am joined by John, Bruno, and Alan. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hey, good, Steven. Hello, Hello. Now, you guys have been working on something um, for the past little while that um, is actually is, is very excited. And as I understand it, um, Alan, this was something that <clears throat> you began to think about um, as a tool that our artists could use in the studio to help with the development of a world like ours, as big as ours, of an MMO um, that, of course, is a difficult, difficult world to build ab amongst the games that are out there. Tell me a little bit about where this idea came from for our landform tool. Hello. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, so I was in the studio um, just trying to figure out uh, a way to kind of speed up my process, other artists process of creating, uh, you know, art, essentially. And smart. I know, really smart. Uh, essentially how big our world is going to be. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I really <laughs> wanted to kind of think about that as well as my constraints, you know, um, and so it kind of just dawned on me as I was working through building art for us um, about this idea I had, which is landform, which, you know, thankful, uh, you know, 
hats off to Bruno for um, you know the name. I think it's fantastic. It's awesome. <laughs> I like it's... it too. It's it's, it's it's perfectly apt for what it does too. <laughs> yeah, totally. For sure. Um, and so I was just trying to think of um, you know those ideas, and and so I was like just trying to think of like uh, the the awesome programs or the softwares that I use, and you know how can I speed up that that flow. Right. Um, so and, and tell me a little bit about the flow, right? Um, John, Bruno, Alan, you guys have have been working for a long time in this industry, and you've built a lot of games. And you know, that's someone who's completed multiple projects in in the game in uh, in development for Ashes, and is like, this could be faster. You know, when you're like, you keep making stuff, and and you're at work, and you're like, there's got to be a better way to do this. And then you start forming an idea of how you can make that happen. That's really cool that he uh, worked on something like this that's going to affect the whole team positively. I think you guys even have some MMO experience, some of you in the past. That I think, Alan, you worked on yep. um, New World uh, was your last project, correct? Yep. Yeah. Wow, and that's recent. And tell me a little bit about what that Big recent. actually is. He said, I'm out. That you guys have worked on. So with you know other projects I've worked on, essentially, you would build your asset also new worlds uh like graphic fidelity for like the actual world the environments top notch the sounds really immersive you know your model it's cool to hear in a third um third party application like my or something and then you would actually start going in and start de detailing it up like in programs like zbrush uh, or what other programs that you want to use, mm -hmm. and then go in and start um, texturing after you UV it. And so then you could jump into like Quixel Mixer or Substance Painter, or you know if you're even trying to do like a tileable or something like that, you go into Designer and, and make that. So you're going to a lot of these different programs, and um, you know you're spending your time doing those processes to create your art. But right. essentially, and, and each time, and each time you kind of move to a different middleware program, that's that's an interruption in the workflow, right? Yeah, yeah. So like, as I'm building something, I'm you know, artists have like this rhythm. You know, it's like this flow that we get into that kind of just help create a create this thing that we're making. You know, and for me, it's like as I'm building something, I'm in this flow, and it's like I'm getting in this rhythm. If I have to separate and go to another application, I'm starting to do like really technical work. I start that idea that that flow kind of like dissipates, you know, it kind of gets yeah, it more, sucks. Uh, softer and vague, you know, and then before you know, it's like out in the mist and it's really hard to grab it uh, and then bring it back into mm -hmm. vision uh, once you're going through all these applications. Because mm -hmm. you got to stop your work like 300 times. So this workflow it's really smart. us to essentially speed that up. And so that's what I was working, looking through uh, in my ideas and, and stuff about like, you know, how can we stay in an engine you know, build a material, a process as well that allows us to create art, um, but really get the high fidelity that we're looking for. And as well, um, speed, right? Iteration that like we just right. talked about for like, you know, hey, does this look good? Oh, no, no that, that looks great. But what about this? And you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's change that up. And then before you know it, you're like, OK, and then you have to go back. Look at those palm tree leaves. Application right. or out of, you know, the engine into another application. The cactus, it all looks so good. Long process. So if you can do that, and build it inside the world that you're you're making then that flow like really that rhythm starts to come a lot easier and before you know it you know if you come to me steve and you're like hey alan i want this cliff to be you know a little bit higher you know uh, i would have to get out of the application or the engine and in, into my application and do that but now, they added the sand in this process that we have really defined uh, now we don't have to do that bruno talk to me a little bit about what Mommy? made this possible with Unreal Engine 5, our migration over to UE5, as opposed mm -hmm. to previously with UE4? Yeah, absolutely. So um, that is something that, uh, of course, became available quite recently with, uh, with uh, 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 um, geometry scripting within uh, UE5. And that's basically like the tool set that we're using to create Landform. That's really so cool. That's actually something that's like really, really fresh and new and like, like cutting edge technology kind of thing. Uh, um, so I'm really happy to hear that them migrating everything to Unreal Engine 5 has already started becoming a net positive in terms of like helping them, uh, you know, develop and produce the game. 
um, rather than being like a hindrance where they, they have to, you know, relearn a bunch of stuff or redo everything. Um, you know, it seems like it's actually just given them more features and, and after they, you know, kind of get used to it and imported a lot of the code over, um, I'm happy to hear that it's, it's helping them and, and giving them new features and obviously allowing them to elevate everything up to an even higher standard. That's really good to hear. And, you know, uh, super promising. Before, of course, you could like like Alan said, we could do this uh, outside of outside of Unreal and um, go to to extended programs and stuff like that. But of course, we wanted to keep that to keep that flow going. We wanted to keep the the artist uh, uh, really connected. Don't want to stop wasting time. Uh, the, the asset that they are. Nobody likes with. wasting time. So uh, yeah, we use this this like fresh new tools from from UE5 to to create uh, landform. And uh, yeah, you know we're it, the tool is here now, and it's it's been amazing to to work with it. And yeah, just having a really good time seeing it. <laughs> yeah, it, it's been exciting. Um, you know, kind of seeing our artists react to this tool's availability now mm -hmm. as part of their workflow, and and kind of replacing, as you guys described, that that external sculpting software like ZBrush or <clears throat> or Maya, and 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 creating really higher resolution geometry to bake it down in this in this making it usable essentially in the game in the actual engine itself john talk to me a little bit about um you know how how this has impacted uh, this area looks beautiful workflow and and where it's really viable for an mmorpg like can't wait to run through this in the game well so in alpha two one of the things that makes it really viable for an mmorpg in this case is the performance side of it so um, I remember I was mentioning something earlier about how performance like I've been wanting to work on an MMO since I was eight years old but <laughs> once I became an adult and became a 3D artist I realized I wanted to work on an MMO but I didn't want to be an artist on an MMO because of the limitations mm -hmm. now one of the things that our tool does here is it allows us to grab that higher fidelity not just in the textures but that cactus geometry so you see the silhouettes of all of the details that you know you might go and play your favorite mmo that you've been playing for 15 years and everything's all flat um you know there's you no, see the palm tree moving in the wind no ridges or anything like that i go a long way now here we are trying to bring in for immersion extra looks so good dimension, mm -hmm. essentially and uh absolutely right before you know joining intrepid i spent some time in film and doing a lot of uh you know that film level scenery and uh, you know i wanted to bring that into the game and I didn't think that was possible until we until we started really working on this. And then so, you know, Alan's got his ideas that he's putting forth and Bruno is building these tools here that's actually making it possible. And then one of the main things I'm doing over here is, uh, you know, making sure that it's optimized and we're reaching that level of performance that is still going to be able to run on an MMO. Right. You know, I've, I've got a lot of friends that want to play this MMO so badly. <laughs> Don't but, we all? <laughs> but they're, they're still, all. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're still running their 10 series graphics cards. You know, they, yep. they haven't been able to uh, right. either find their RTXs or afford them even, you know, because they got really expensive there. They're hella expensive. So for me, it's a little really better now, but that we reach that fidelity, mm -hmm. but we do it in a way where you know those people can still play it because when that's every time you try to increase the fidelity in a game you run mm -hmm. the risk of alienating a part of your potential player base right yep. and for me the most important thing you know yeah i want it to look good but i also don't want to alienate any of these people that want to enter the world mm -hmm. of vera Absolutely. and be part of our community Absolutely. yeah i mean we've all played mmos right we're all mmo gamers i remember um <clears throat> you know we we've talked about the kind of games that we've played and and one of the biggest components of a fun experience in an MMO is having a very high population having a lot of people around mm -hmm. you and the more that are capable of playing an MMO that's in Unreal Engine 5 which you know this this 
this type of tool allows us to, as you just described, make this a viable Look at that lighting. application on lower end spec machines. Uh, it looks so good. And, that's, and, and, and that is really alleviating a barrier to entry that a lot of newer generation games have that, that we're trying to lower. Um, so, so tell me a little bit about, um, you know, what we're seeing here with. Yeah. Steven talking about making it more accessible and, and the environment artist. Um, that's really important. I mean, you want as many people to be able to play and obviously you want to give them the best experience still too. So this is like one of those things where like optimization goes so far, you know, you don't want a game that you just release and, and no one can run it at 60 FPS or something like that, you know, and it's choppy or something like that. Um, also want to touch on the environment artist who, you know, always wanted to work on an MMO, but, uh, kind of stayed away from it because typically the quality standards for MMOs, like environment artists, you know, it wasn't that high. So it's like, you almost don't, you can't really be proud of like your work because they're not asking you to make the best palm trees and, and rock formations and environment that, that you could do. They're asking for, you know, fill out this world and it needs to be able to run on, you know, my, my 15 year old laptop. I used to play WoW on my laptop, legit. Um, so that, that's all really cool and super exciting for, to hear them talking about and like finding a solution, um, and being able to keep these recommended specs still where they're at. I don't think they've changed uh, since they were announced like a year or two ago as well. With, uh, with this modeling, you know, you guys are watching, um, you know, some of these demonstrations of the of these uh of the manipulation of the tool actually in the in the engine itself talk to me a little bit about what we're looking at sure Any, yeah, so we can, <laughs> yeah we yeah we can jump into uh looking at the tool here and manipulation uh, tool you know essentially what we're doing is we're taking a lot of uh if we have any 3d artists or you know game developers out there watching today uh we're taking a lot of that external painting aspect and bringing it into the engine you know we're we're not using painter we're not using mixer for this uh but both of those were inspirations so so painting it mixing it you know they wouldn't have even been able to be doing this directly in in engine it, it sounds like they were having to keep exporting and importing it back and forth so the fact that they can do all this and create this all in front of us in one session that's big Absolutely. that's a big deal you know the end result is going to be that we're essentially displacing this texture into actual geometry but uh, i'll let alan jump in and talk a little bit about what we're looking at here sure sure um so i think the one of the things that uh, was big for me is is the ux part of this right is bringing the the, the user experience of how these programs work within Unreal. So what we're looking at is essentially me painting texture sets um, on this model that allows us to basically duplicate. That's really cool. How, you know, painter would be uh, or mixer essentially. But now we're able to do that within Unreal and I'm able to use Megascan's assets. You know, they're tileables essentially and I'm able to paint uh, layers on this, which are, you know, what we're looking at right here. And then, um, you know, you have a way to blend between uh, the height, so in and out. There's a lot of dynamic masking going on. Um, and all this is basically allows the artist to create the thing that they want to in engine, which is fantastic. And right now what you're looking at is I was able to sculpt inside of Unreal, push in the inside, um, before I'd have to go to like ZBrush, you know? And then, you know, with the tool, I'm able to uh, get the things I need to, to bake out and I'm being a little, you know, descriptive there, <laughs> you know? Um, uh, so we can hide a little bit of our secrets. Game you know, as, top. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and I'm able to displace it. And then I can keep on using Unreal's tools to keep on refining my process, you know, in the mesh and the asset, you know, at any time, 
through this and the big part of this and Bruno can talk about that and even John is that this is a non-destructive workflow and that was really important to us because this allows me to be free of that I don't have to worry about oh shoot did I do the wrong thing you know in my iteration is yeah. king <laughs> right yes, exactly absolutely. So this just allows us to, to move forward and then also move back um, without any hiccups. And it's just fantastic. Mm -hmm. yeah, Bruno, yeah. talk to us a little bit more about that. Yeah, I can, uh, I can comment on it real quick. Uh, but basically uh, what Alan is saying is that you can always go back to your, to your original meshes and to your original assets and, and uh, redo the process or create an entire new mesh based on that same you know, starting point. Um, and it's always going to be there for you. It, it, it's not like, uh, basically, this is what a non-destructive workflow is. You can always go back and, and undo or, or, you know, start again from scratch if you, if you want to do another iteration of it. Uh, it's just uh, really powerful. It gets that, 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 uh, 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 gets the artist like more relaxed about like, oh, I'm not going to break anything, you know? <laughs> uh, right. and so I say like, go and break things because you can always go back. <laughs> right. And, and John, you were talking about, you know, iteration is king. And, and boy, is that true, especially on an MMORPG where let's say designers might come to you and want this cliff face to be looking a little bit different for the needs of their quest or the pathing that they might want to have a certain monster take around a particular POI or some statue like this, right? And you guys have with the ease of this tool, the ability to make those iterations actually in engine. Yes, absolutely. So. One of the things here, you know, going through and, you know, painting on something and, you know, sculpting on it and trying to get all those details in, you know, you spend a lot of time doing that. And in traditional workflows where you would do it in external sculpting software and things like that, you know, it was a headache when somebody Adobe. came to you and wants some kind of iteration, but that's the reality <laughs> of the industry it, it's yes. it's all about iter iteration you know the first version is never the version that makes it in um and if anybody <laughs> tells you it is and they're lying to you <laughs> <laughs> absolutely you know, sorry so bro like, i don't have time to open up uh, things, another program uh, right now i always tell my students that i mentor is that you know the key to being a 3d artist in this industry is you cannot get married to your work you oh, have to. you know what? That's Absolutely. so funny, John, that you say that because <laughs> at the start of every design meeting, I make each of our designers go through and say, I am not my design and my design is not me. <laughs> <laughs> this is my asset. There are many like it. There are many. Mine. <laughs> this one's mine. Exactly. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's so yeah. Funny. So, but, but that's the thing, you know, there's, there's the iteration side of it, but then there's also uh, the variation side of it. And one of the things that I personally wanted to use this tool to approach was variation. So like one of the things we can do with it is we can take an asset that's essentially built clean and then we can go in and we can uh, use the landform tool to essentially create a duplicate of that asset, go in and start doing sculpting on it. Mm -hmm. uh, we can add these um, extra details. We can add damage. We can add uh, buildup of some kind of gunk or something like that. Save that out and then set that aside as variant A, then we can go back in, grab the asset again, start over, paint it a completely different way, create another variant of it. So that's really cool. Could, uh, really good for the game. For an MMO where yeah. reusability Absolutely. is exactly. key into in managing this giant world we have to <laughs> yeah. make. Yeah, and so let's say that you have uh, you have a hall of statues, like ten statues on either side. In you know traditional games, you walk through there and you see ten repeating statues on each side, twenty repeated statues. Mm -hmm. Now you could go in and you could sculpt in all kind of damage detail to create variants, but a problem that you run into on the performance side is that now you're adding a lot of resource yeah. overhead and then that tanks things down 
your frames per second goes down. Some engineer comes screaming at you. Down <laughs> yeah, the or the, the yeah. tech artist, <laughs> the tech artist starts like shooting you with a Nerf gun and yeah. you know, giving giving you the. <laughs> but what we can do here is we can have uh, an artist sculpt out something beautiful, and then we get it into the engine. You know, they sculpt that beautiful statue, and then you take that statue and you can create even 19 more variants of it right quickly and, and you can go through and you can use the tool to paint it in a different way to create damage in different places uh and then have those all lined up but i don't know if you guys noticed but up at the top it said uh riverlands and then also um what was it, it was riverlands and desert you can it's interesting you can use the, those is using the same set of textures tileable mm -hmm. textures and everything yep. uh that were used giant to, palm you know, use the tool on it and so traditionally you couldn't do this because you would have to have 20 different bespoke <laughs> texture sets and now you have one it's just that altered or customized each of those statues but they still look different because of yep you know the, the extra they're just working off of the base uh, version for the variation so yeah iterations and variations i think are the key component here i think yeah, the other it, thing go sorry, ahead guys. sorry i was just gonna see if i can add to that a little bit there's a there's a big aspect of this tool that is a you know like the, the procedural workflow that we're using here mm -hmm. Uh, but I just wanted to comment real quick that even though, yes, we're using like all of this like procedural uh, 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 techniques in it, it still gives the, access, the, the, the artist all of the power. So there's still someone curating that, that procedural workflow, right? So it's not like we're pressing a button, generate statue. There's someone still <laughs> going in there and painting that detail and adding that yes. detail where, where it needs to be, right? There's yeah, an artist behind every part of it. Yeah, it's all Absolutely. curated. <laughs> Absolutely. And that's exactly what I was going to mention, too, is that it's basically procedural with hand painted work. So you're able to get a best of both two worlds, you know, uh, get something that's done very quickly because it's procedural and then have the artist control that and paint out um, what they want to see. Mm -hmm. Absolutely phenomenal. Well, guys, I, I think I speak for the community when I say <clears throat> that we are incredibly impressed with not just the the hard work that you're putting forth in, in helping make ashes of creation a reality but also the way in which you're you're using your minds to create more efficient workflows so that the task of creating a world as big as ashes as big as hello and with i am i'm impressed i think it's i think they're doing great work really cool to see and i'm really happy to see it Come back. It's going to pay yeah. dividends for sure. I enjoyed it. a little bit more of a tech heavy uh, piece. I know there weren't a ton of questions. I didn't have a, I had a feeling that there weren't going to be a ton. There are a lot of people asking, who is she? The, the sand mom statue lady. Oh, yeah. sand mommy. Well, we can't answer that. Um, that's something that you will need to discover in the world, <laughs> but, uh, she does have significance. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Sandal queen. I like that one too. It was, it was great. Sandal queen. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I thought I would ask it, even though I know we won't, we won't believe you an answer quite yet, but you'll, you'll find out. I'm sure. Um, absolutely. Yeah. No, yeah. It, you know, it's, it's always great to have these, um, you know, technical showcases as well. I know in the past we've done um, developer diaries and we, we want to get around to doing those again, but um, you know, there's a lot that goes in to making an MMORPG, uh, but especially in making a large open world. Um, <clears throat> and there are not a lot of out of the box tools that help with that process. So it's important that, um, you know, as a studio, as a development team, that we're conscientious of our workflows, of the pipelines that require us to think outside of the box in making um, specially curated tools to improve that, to make it scalable, to make it possible within the amount of time we want um, to build the types of things that we wanna do. And a lot of that for, especially the creative realm of game creation, you know, 
It is about keeping the consistency of that creative workflow in place. And oftentimes some, you know, the middleware software that's available out there is amazing. It is incredibly versatile. There's never going to be a way that you will entirely remove that from, I think, the process, at least, at least not for some time. But <clears throat> where we can mitigate that, at least on an iterative level, that's where it's very fruitful to an artist or to <clears throat> a development team to be able to stay within the engine for those iterative processes, right? Um, and and the landform tool is is really useful. And in fact, you know this is and I know it was said in the in the discussion, but this is just <clears throat> the early application of that landform tool. Um, there's a lot more that's planned to make that tool very versatile in its capabilities within the engine. Um, and it's going to be exciting to see it incorporated further in our pipeline. The fan art is crazy so looking, really very good. I'm impressed by um, the incredible work that uh, our technical art teams, as well as our art teams in general, are doing to bring Ashes of Creation, the world of Vera, to life. Um, and I know you guys appreciate kind of getting insight under the hood, especially those of you who are amateur developers or who are just getting started in the industry or who might be at other studios. This is also an incredible recruitment tool so that, you know, one thing that is the lifeblood, I think, of any project uh, out there in game development is the tools, um, the tools that you have access to to help ease, uh, to help scale, to help uh, inform um, what it is. Is that you're developing and um, you know here at this studio we we put tools on a pedestal right we we want to make sure that um, we are providing our developers with the tools that they need and that's why we have a very the smart technical teams that are that are conscientious of how not many people falling behind the technical art knowledge or the engineering knowledge um, to facilitate that tools development um, and we also want that to be uh, a, a high point when we prospect new developers to join our team that they get to see uh, the types of tools that are available when working not only with unreal engine 5 which is an incredible engine created by epic but also within the <clears throat> the tool sets that we're creating internally as well to interface with Unreal Engine 5. Um, and that's a very important aspect. So um, happy to share that stuff with you guys. And I hope you guys are excited to to see that and learn about it. And... Yeah, it's like it's like getting a new job and, you know, maybe you have to deliver stuff. If you're doing Uber or something like that or Postmates. And they're like, you don't even have to use your own car. We have a car for you all ready to go. I'd much rather work for a company that's going to give me a car than make me have to fucking figure it out in some way or another, you know, down the line. Um, and the fact that they're, you know, that Steven's saying that this is only the beginning of the landform tool and like its iteration, that's really crazy. I think that really positions it to, you know, uh, almost be possibly marketed to other studios in the future. Maybe since they're working so closely with Epic and, and Unreal Engine 5 and they're kind of pioneering the beginning of, uh, you know, developing in UE5. And it's a, it's a fun aspect of making games. <laughs> and I think one of the main things that we've been trying to show you guys is like the journey of creating a product, creating a, a, a game, you know, yes. I don't think a lot of people get to experience that. Um, and you're getting to see not only, you know, the outcome of what is the creation, but the process of creation. Um, and Absolutely. so if you want to see more of those things, do let us know. Um, you know we, but, we all know this because we're all gamers, but, yeah. but games are the future. I mean, the, the gaming market today is larger than any other form of entertainment combined. Um, and it's only going to continue to grow as you know, more and more people get access and familiarity with computers and consoles and whatnot. So, yeah, it's crazy to think about uh, and to realize. It's kind of like being on the cutting edge of, you know, the advent of the internet or of computers. Gaming is in and of itself something that is the future. And we're going to see more and more development teams continue to, to become, uh, you know, uh, worthwhile investments on the gaming side um, for us to participate in the development and the journey of, um, and it's it's great that you guys I, I think it's great that one of the things I love about Ashes is the ability to interface with the community and being having that open and transparent development process because yeah, 
I just think about how, you know, 15, 20 years ago when I was playing games, you know, at 18 years old <clears throat> that I didn't, you know, get this type of insight, right? I just, I just grabbed the title when it released. Now there's an opportunity to kind of watch the progress, to watch the development, to learn and understand. Um, and I think that's a really cool aspect, not for everyone, of course, um, <laughs> but it is something that those of us who are interested in have the opportunity to do so now more and more today than we ever did in the past. Mm -hmm. And and I think, yeah, like, I don't necessarily want to become like a developer. I mean, it sounds cool, but I'm just saying without without actively trying to be in the development scene or like work in game dev, it's very cool to see the behind the scenes and the inner workings and uh, allows you to really appreciate, you know, like the work that these uh, talented developers are putting in to make these projects. I think it's really cool to see that. Some people obviously don't care and they just want to, they just want to have the game out. Um, but I personally think it's really cool to see and, and it helps me appreciate like the scope and, and amount of work that goes into creating stuff like this. I think from a developer standpoint, as like a person working at a company, I've worked, <laughs> you know, at quite a few and, when you don't have the right tools, it can be very frustrating. So, you know, praise yeah. Steven for allowing developers <laughs> to have the opportunity to spend time to create tools. I think a lot of the times we're... Yeah, that's you know, huge. They're like, okay, well, Access is your tool. You have to use that. And you're basically just like pasting spreadsheet data in there. I hate like, companies like that. Fingers hoping stuff doesn't break, right? Oh, and and that's the, that's the age stories. that I've come from is, you know... you know, My way or the highway. Got to do it. There's uh, only one way that we can like, fuck utilize that. and make processes faster. I think you mentioned being scalable, you know, as we pull more people on or not needing as many people because you have great tools that do things faster. I think it's just trying to like, you know, explain that to folks who, Absolutely. you know, maybe don't get to you know, be in the day to day of creating. A, yeah. And then you don't have to hire as many people right. and you can pay the people you already have more. All right. With that, uh, unless you have anything else you want to add, Steven. No. Uh, we shall move on to our character art. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split I'm going to split this reaction here. So this will be the reaction to the landform tool. Um, and then I'll do a second part two for the uh, character art update and uh, Steve update. And then obviously I've already seen uh, that we got some some Tolnar, uh, you know, sneak peek looks. Um, so I'm going to split it here. Uh, thanks for watching. I'm going to keep covering Ashes of Creation. Um, please leave a like and subscribe if you are interested in the project. I'll be covering it going forward, um, from here on out. I'm very passionate about the game and I can't wait to see where it's headed. Um, Alpha 2 sometime soon, hopefully. Imagine if we got it. Imagine if we got an announcement for Alpha 2 by the end of the year. That'd be really cool. Uh, but that'll be it for me here, guys. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Um, big stuff to be really excited about. Desert looking great. I think I might want to start my character in the desert. Um, but that'll be it here for the, uh, the reaction for the first half of the uh, July Ashes of Creation dev live stream. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.